Hi, it's Friday afternoon here in California. It's uh, been quite a week, another quite a week, and uh, we're trying to make sense of uh, what's happening in Washington and um, in our federal government once again. And uh, I thought I would uh, uh, share some of my thoughts once again and answer a few questions. Um, one of the things that I think is really important for us to do is to keep our eyes on the ball. We need to make sure that we don't mistake what's in the headlines for what's really important. The president and his team are masters of deception, and that's their prerogative. And while there are many very good reporters, there are also a lot of media outlets that are not necessarily picking the most important news to make the lead stories. So watch what's important. Watch what's really going to matter in the long run. So um, yes, yesterday's news conference was pretty bizarre, and that's not trivial. We need to be paying attention to that, but what's been going on in the background? I think one of the most important developments this week was the news from China as well as the news from Moscow. First, let's look at what happened in Moscow. We have word from Moscow that the Kremlin has ordered the state-run news media to slow down its laudatory coverage of the Trump administration. So many of you may not have been aware that uh, just as Trump had been praising Vladimir Putin, the Russian media had been very favorable toward Trump. Not so much anymore. Watch that one. Also, there's been a Russian spy ship positioned off the coast, the east coast of the United States this week. It has been hovering close to where our submarines are docked in Connecticut. That hasn't happened in a very long time and that's troubling. It's rather disturbing to me that we haven't heard a word from the administration about this. I think that's something that we should be asking a lot of questions about. So that's Moscow. Now let's look at the other direction. Let's see what's happening in China. Last weekend, of course, we had the North Korea missile test and the extraordinary discussion about the North Korea missile test in public at the golf course in Florida and the horrendous breach of security by having the president's national security team talking about it in the middle of a golf course with people who had not any security clearance within earshot. So that's, I mean, a horrendous breach of national security, which is just awful. Let's set that aside for a second. Let's talk about some of the facts here, though. Um, remember how Trump acknowledged the premier of Taiwan uh, right as he was becoming president, and that set off some pretty major diplomatic flurries because historically the United States has not officially recognized Taiwan as a state. That was the big deal when Nixon was president and recognized China. That was a major change in U.S. policy. The One China policy has been a key to stability in the Far East, in fact. It's been a key part of how we have managed to keep North Korea in check. And the acknowledgement of Taiwan's head of state by Trump actually put some destabilizing energy into the Far East, and that probably put some energy behind the North Korean dictator 
and might have been why he felt he could launch that missile last week. That's my thinking. Uh, pretty reasonable to think that, too. Meanwhile, all of a sudden, Trump declared a week ago the one China policy is very much still in place. Okay, that's good. That is the right thing for him to do, clarifying that the one China policy is official U.S. policy. Good move, sir. What does China do? It changes 10 years of denial of a trademark of the Trump name. Donald Trump, for 10 years, has been trying to trademark his name in China for construction. And for 10 years, he's been unable to do that. And the Chinese government has now given Donald J. Trump personally a gift that he has readily accepted. Think about it. He has personally benefited from the office of President of the United States. The Emoluments Clause of the Constitution of the United States is very accept a gift or payment from a foreign government and Trump he'd done it previously because he's been taking money from guests at his hotels that he's refused to divest from but if there was any doubt about those transactions now we have a direct connection and not only is it a direct connection between the Chinese government and Donald J Trump but we also have a direct connection in time between a decision that Donald J Trump has made between we've got direct connection between a decision that Donald J Trump made as president and a decision that the Chinese government has made in response so I think this is time for the congressional investigators to step up. So if you haven't been talking to your members of Congress up till now, it is time. Um, again, the timeline is pretty significant. The executive order, the, the, the Muslim ban executive order, the timing there was the reason why the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals knocked it down, because the timing of the president's words did not match what the Justice Department claimed the rationale for the order was. So here, if Trump claims there's an innocent explanation for that trademark in China, the, the facts and the timing just don't jive. So, yeah, we need to do it. Um, Eve, thank you for uh, uh, mentioning the uh, mic issue. Let me see if I can do it. I'm going to have to, I'm actually going, now that I've got an office, I'm going to be getting a, uh, uh, I'll, I'll be setting up my better microphone. Um, is that audio better? I just moved the mic. Um, yes or no? Is that better? I'm going to, I will get this, I will get this to work. Um, I'm hoping that's better. Um, we need to really be watching closely. The other thing that we also, um, so again, we need to be watching behind the scenes. Um, we need to be paying less attention to what happens in front of the camera. Thanks, Eve. I really appreciate that. Um, and and my, my other, my good microphone when it comes out of the box, which I will try to find this weekend, is going to make a big difference. Um, Every time Trump or Sean Spicer or one of the other folks comes out and rants in front of the cameras, you can be sure there's something happening behind the scenes. And there's, there's 
two big categories behind the scenes that we should be looking at. One is what's actually happening behind the scenes. And the other thing, and this is actually, as somebody who's spent a lot of time in Washington that I'm kind of worried about, there's a lot of stuff that's not happening behind the scenes. So the stuff that's happening behind the scenes are things like the draft memo that emerged this morning um, that I posted on my Facebook page and a lot of others uh, have shared around as well. The AP found, uh, was, was given a copy of a January 25th, I believe it was, draft memo uh, uh, that was developed uh, in support of not the, uh, the Muslim ban, but the, uh, the, this was the executive order that allows the Department of Homeland Security to deputize local police and sheriff's offices to enforce immigration laws. And um, <laughs> This draft memo was a rationale to call up the National Guard as an immigration enforcement force. Now, there's, there's all kinds of problems with that, of course, including the fact that you can't do that, in fact, under the Constitution. But set that aside, and it's just a draft memo, so it's probably never going to happen, but the mere fact that there was a conversation about it, that there was a memo talking about whether it was possible, means that there were people thinking about it. Um, that's a problem. Um, my hunch is that a memo like this was developed to scare people, purely as a scare tactic, so that when something less than that is actually done, people will accept something awful, but not that scary. And say, oh, well, they're, they're not calling up the National Guard, but they're just going to bring in federal troops, uh, you know, to, to, you know, stand on the corners. Um, that's bad. So we do need to be watching that really carefully. So that's where the action is happening. And then there's the whole category where things are not happening. And I think there's going to be a huge amount of that. Um, there were stories during the first week of the Trump administration about large numbers of senior, experienced bureaucrats being dismissed. Um, we know that that's what happened. Uh, in the State Department, um, virtually every senior professional you know, these are the folks that run the diplomatic security corps, the top, um, you know, the, the folks that actually make the machinery of government run, who have been there, you know, 20, 30 years, professionals, many of them dedicated people who know a ton of stuff, were sent home. You know, your services are no longer needed. And that's extraordinary. Now, there's a lot of good rationale to bring in new people. But the idea that they dismissed large numbers of professional people without having replacements already lined up is what alarms me. Now, I've heard from my friends in the federal government that in a few places, they did have professionals lined up to step in right away. So that's good. But that has not been the case in most of the federal agencies. So there are a lot of federal agencies where there's nobody home. And that's maybe what they want. Maybe the idea is to create a vacuum where nothing happens. Maybe we want to see what happens when there's no enforcement of any federal regulations, or the government just comes to a grinding halt. Um, there's actually some rationale that that's what we want to see happening on the liberal side. Uh, you know, if the Democrats make every confirmation of a Trump appointee take forever or take as long as they can, if they drag every appointment to the full 30 hours and there's 1,200 or so uh, appointments that need to be confirmed, it'll take a long time to get the legislative agenda through Congress, um, then, well, Maybe Trump doesn't get anything done. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. But the business of government is actually important um, in some cases. Um, in California, we're trying to get high-speed rail done. Um, if, 
if those grants are stuck, there's 10,000 people in Utah who are going to be put out of work. I'm not sure the con congressional delegation from Utah is going to be so happy if that happens. Um, the biotech business, the technology sector, um, and then, of course, clean air and clean water. Um, there's a lot of consequences if those regulations get tied up or eliminated, which is, of course, what our new EPA director favors. So a lot of interesting things happening or not happening. So the, the fact is that this administration, on one level, wants a lot of action and I think is trying to distract us from the places where they want no action. So don't be fooled by the headlines. Also, be very wary when you see people posting about, oh, they're raiding the local high school and things like that. In, in a few cases, that's been happening. So there's some bad stuff happening. The idea that, that, that the immigration uh, folks uh, arrested a woman who went to the courthouse to get away from her husband who was beating her and deported her away from her kids is horrifying to me. The idea that we are separating families, we're making things worse. The idea that we've got immigration agents even showing up at schools is sending the wrong message to all children, not just immigrants or illegal immigrants. This is causing harm to everybody. And it's actually going to have, I think, a very significantly negative impact on the overall economy because I know a lot of business leaders who are really shifting their planning for the rest of 2017 because of the uncertainty. Uh, people are afraid to make plans for business uh, or plans for business meetings, if nothing else. And um, that's, that just doesn't seem healthy. So we need to keep on this. We need to not let a day go by without paying attention. If you hear people saying, oh, I need to just step away from politics. Well, no, we actually need to be paying attention. Start by paying attention locally. Local politics is where the action is. If you're not already paying attention to who's running for your local town councils, your state offices, state attorney generals right now are going to be in the best position to keep check on what the federal government is doing. So be in touch with your state lawmakers. Um, pay attention to the headlines every day. Subscribe to newspapers, please. I recommend two newspapers, Washington Times, uh, sorry, Washington Post and New York Times are really pulling out all the stops, which is great. Also, you know, pick a publication like Foreign Policy, The Week, BBC, um, you know, try to pick a publication from outside the normal stream. Uh, the Guardian has been doing some great coverage. Um, also, I want to address a couple of questions that uh, that, that came up. Um, there was a question about what um, what are the rules governing uh, correspondence with lawmakers. Um, so Congress, of course, exempts itself from all the laws. So um, while the ethical thing to do is if uh, if you correspond with a uh, a lawmaker, they should, of course, uh, keep everything public. Uh, especially if it's on Facebook, but they, they are allowed to do whatever they want. So uh, if you post something on Facebook and they choose to delete your post, that's fair game. I would recommend post something to Facebook and take a screenshot. And if they delete it, screenshot it again and embarrass them if they're deleting things because they're public officials. They should be proud to be public about what they say and do. Um, if they are members of the executive branch, however, there are laws about what they do. And one of the things that is very troubling is that we know that members of the Trump administration are using private email servers, where have we heard that before, for some of their correspondence. And uh, we're not hearing much noise about that, are we? Hmm. We should be. Yep. Um, we also know that the president is using an insecure cell phone still. Last week, yep, he was tweeting from 
an insecure cell phone. Again, still, he's been caught doing that multiple times. <sighs> yeah, that's pretty outrageous, isn't it? And I see a question from Susan, which is, uh, let's see, Doug, will you please talk about uh, Representative Gutierrez of Illinois, who's being excluded from a meeting at the Capitol with the Immigration and Customs Enforcement. He was asked to leave. Um, yeah, okay, so I had not heard about that incident in particular, but um, it's not surprising that um, Paul Ryan and uh, the crew there are excluding people from meetings because they can. It's Congress. They get to write their own rules. Um, we need to publicize this. We need to shame them. Um, the, the folks from the Immigration and Customs Enforcement uh, branch tried to say that the raids that were done last week were routine and ongoing and there was nothing unusual about this. And they put out some statistics saying, you know, talking about how this was just, you know, part of the routine enforcement ongoing. And, but um, there's actually very little evidence to support what they were claiming. Um, there was a sweep last Thursday and Friday. There's no way to characterize it any other way. Um, I, I do think there were also a lot of incorrect rumors, and, and I think that's by design. I think basically what's trying to happen here is that the, the people that are anti-immigrant uh, are trying to create a climate of fear. And it's in the interest of those people to not have accurate information go around. And that's really unfortunate. Um, and that's also why we need to really stand up against the claims of fake news. Um, you know, every time you hear somebody say fake news, fake news, fake news, you need to really be pushing back carefully about that. Because, and, you know, let's, let's go back to what Trump was saying yesterday. You know, the, the, the leaks were real, but the news was fake. Well, no, actually, the news was real. He confirmed that the, the news was real. So um, it's not fake news. Um, you know, his own words confirm that. So we need to be calling them on it um, and, and, and holding on that. Um, and, um, you know, in terms of the, the blocking people from meetings, I, I don't have any good explanation for it. Um, Congress is out of control. Um, the the idea that Jason Chaffetz, of the uh, who chairs the uh, House Oversight Committee, uh, is investigating uh, the uh, it, he's he's more concerned about what the CDC is doing to communicate about the Zika virus than he is about Trump's conflicts of interest. Um, it, it's just extraordinary to me. Um, but we need to make sure that every time one of these people does something outrageous, that we make sure that we communicate about it. But we, do, we need to do it in a very careful way. We need to not shout. We need to be rational about it. We need to be uh, calm, respectful, even, even when it's difficult. Um, we also need to try very hard to find people who are in the districts where those people are from, because no matter how much we would like to call Paul Ryan directly, he's only going to respond to his own voters, and that's what we have to really do. Um, and you know, unless we want to give money, if we want to give money to his opponent, that that's a good thing to do. So um, you know, check the rumors before spreading them. Uh, make sure we do something every single day in support of people who are trying to resist. Um, Robert Reich uh, is doing a, a, pod, a, a Facebook Live every day at 5 o'clock California time. Um, he's a great source of good analysis of what's going on. 
Um, I'm going to try to do these at least once a week. I haven't been as regular as I want to be. I will step that up. I'll also get better equipment, I promise. Um, please keep the questions coming, and I really appreciate uh, everybody's uh, support and encouragement. We are in this together. It's been a month. We'll make it somehow. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>